Well, thank you very much. My name is Paul Mills, and I'm a uh, second year doctoral student in marketing at Kent State University. So I say that to lower expectations. Um, I'm going to talk to you this morning a little bit about some work we're doing uh, in uh, rewards and motivation to give, uh, particularly social rewards. Um, we're sort of motivated to do this because uh, it's great to have so many practitioners because a very large proportion of, uh, of nonprofits are using rewards to uh, try and incent people to donate. And so we were, we were chatting yesterday on the way back to the hotel. It's, it's fundraising time for most of the public radio stations. And so you've seen the up the ante from uh, coffee mugs to crank up radios and even chances to win vacations and tickets and, and all sorts of really substantial, tangible rewards for folks. And there's a lot of evidence, you know, they do this because it works. So, uh, you know, offering rewards, Basic uh, economics says people are going to respond to these rewards, and so there have been a bunch of studies. Rachel Cross did a nice study that, in, in particular, with public radio showed spikes associated with uh, different uh, rewards in public radio. And there's a lot of evidence that many people are motivated to give when you offer them an incentive to give. But then there's some downsides to that, right? So one is very simply that the rewards are costly. So when we met with WCPN public uh, radio station in Cleveland, they told us that 20% uh, of the uh, individual donation money that they raised during their fund drives goes towards funding premium gifts. And so it's a substantial chunk of revenue for many uh, nonprofits goes back into the funding of these incentives. So it's financially costly, and we're also interested in a more subtle effect, which is, uh, you know, been studied which is this crowding out effect. So if people are normally intrinsically motivated to give, and I offer them a uh, financial incentive to do that, I can actually replace that intrinsic motivation with you know, a desire to be motivated for the reward and crowd out normal intrinsic giving behavior. And this has been studied in the literature with these sorts of tangible rewards, and there's good sort of evidence uh, that this crowding out effect has been observed with these sort of monetary or financial rewards. Our interest is in social rewards, so it's a nice segue from sort of the previous paper. And we're seeing that many nonprofits are using social rewards. It's not really a very good definition of social rewards in the literature. We all know what it looks like when we see it, but we sort of operationalize it here by saying that it's really something that gives the, the donor some utility in the form of social capital for their donation. And so you see in the literature that there's a variety of social rewards that people have studied. So these are things like status or prestige or image or you know, very popularly recognition. So my name is in the program or goes on a plaque or there's an announcement that I'm a donor and this gives me some social capital. This may make me feel good. In the case of our previous speaker, I may not get any benefit from that. It may in fact be disutility in the case where it would not be considered a reward, for example. So uh, my colleagues, Jen Johnson and uh, Pam Grimm, did a study in 2010 in the arts, with some arts uh, organizations, that showed that um, people that had communal relationships and people that had exchange relationships with these uh, ch charitable organizations and these nonprofits both really felt that there was an appeal to these social rewards. And so maybe these social rewards act sort of differently um, than monetary rewards. And in particular, we're interested in seeing, we know that there's uh, lots of evidence that they motivate people, but the question was, do they produce this crowding out effect? So if we offer social rewards to people who are otherwise intrinsically motivated to donate to the charity, does this change their propensity to give for uh, your intrinsic motivation? And so our question is, are intrinsically motivated donations crowded out? And if they are, how does that crowding out compare to monetary rewards? So this is present another tool for nonprofits in their sort of uh, toolbox for raising funds. So we do this with a, uh, an experiment. We've done several experiments. Um, I'll present the results of one today. 
Um, we went to a high traffic place on campus, so the student center. We uh, recruited students under the pretext, and it, it, it's true, it was a deception that they were going to be paid $10 to fill out a questionnaire on motivation. Um, they were given $10 for this effort. Prior to completing the questionnaire, when they signed up and we gave them their questionnaire, we actually gave them 40 raffle tickets, each worth 25 cents. So they got their $10 in these raffle tickets, so they probably sort of smelled a rat a little bit coming. On the way to the room to fill out their questionnaires, we passed through a sort of private area where we had set up a, a table. Uh, this was the week before the American Cancer Society Relay for Life event. So there's a lot of visibility of this charity uh, on campus. And we said to the students, you, uh, we're going to give you the opportunity, if you wish, to donate some portion of your tickets voluntarily to this charity. Um, we'll leave you alone. Your, 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 uh, your donation is in private. Um, and then go and, and take the questionnaire. There were four donation treatments. I'll show you those in a, in a moment. And so people had this voluntary sort of private and confidential way to do this donation. So just a moment on the treatments. The baseline treatment for us was that students, there was a box and they can take some of their raffle tickets. And, and these tickets, which were valued to them at 25 cents, so any ticket that they cashed in after doing their questionnaire, they were paid for. Um, but any ticket that they put in the donation box, 25 cents, was donated to Relay for Life. There was no reward offered. And so our interpretation of this is that any donations made under that condition are intrinsically motivated by the student. In the next condition, we have the same option for them. But there's another box, and the box says, uh, if you place tickets in this box, money will go to Relay for Life, we'll donate to Relay for Life. At the end of the, uh, the study, however, we'll pull out a raffle ticket, and that student will win a reward. In this case, it was a gift certificate to a, a, a popular restaurant near campus, part of the uh, Chipotle restaurants. So you want a $50 uh, gift card. And the, uh, the cost of this comes out of the, the funding of the, of the tickets. So it's costly to the donations. It's costly to the charity to do that. So this is uh, our tangible reward condition. And we consider that when students are facing the option to put tickets that go directly to the charity or to donate to a tangible reward, if those students choose to put the tickets into the box where they get no reward, that this indicates their intrinsic motivation to give. And in looking between treatments, we sort of interpret that a reduction, when we're able to look at and how people respond to the different treatments, that the reduction in intrinsic giving between these treatments is indicating a, uh, a crowding out just a quick clarify, did you yes. ask them what they would do with the reward if they won it? We did ask them, so the questionnaire, which they hadn't taken yet, did not ask them what they would do with the reward, but it asked a lot of questions about their value of the reward. So we tried to understand to make sure. So one motive for giving to the tangible case is because I want to give the money back to the charity and I don't want someone else to get it. Right, exactly. Yeah. And we also wanted to try and control for preferences for the reward and, and some of that. So, uh, so we have a lot of covariates that we get from this, uh, that I'll talk about, from this questionnaire that they took. Then we have, yes? Sorry, one other question. The tangible reward, they were told there was one prize? Because then it yes. seems like I'm not changing the cost to the charity, I'm just decreasing the probability that other students... Uh, so they know that it's costly to the charity. But it's, it's no more costly if I throw right. my tickets in the tangible reward. Yeah, True. That's right. That's right. So there's no marginal cost to the chair. Uh, I should also say, you know, we chose the boxes are closed so people can't see or calculate the expected sort of odds of winning the reward and that type of thing. In the, in the social reward conditions, and we have two, one is with a, uh, a bunch of uh, social merchandise. So this was a package of merchandise that said Relay for Life, American Cancer Society, it was water bottles and blankets and that type of stuff. 
Um, so I'm going to talk about that as a sort of hybrid reward. And then finally, a, a really a very purely uh, social reward, which was social recognition. So the students were told that one student would be selected and their name would be put on a banner of donors at the tent for the Relay Awards, uh, the Relay for Life ceremony. A luminaria would be donated in, in their name. Um, and so they would have social recognition. So that's our point. So let me show you some of the results. So we look at total numbers of tickets donated. So in the no reward condition, remember there are uh, 200 students that we recruited, 50 in each uh, treatment condition. Uh, each student was given 40 tickets, so in each treatment condition there's 2,000 tickets that are given out. We see about 10% of those tickets donated, 208 tickets in the no reward condition. Fewer donated under the tangible reward condition. We see an increase in both of the social recognition and social merchandise conditions. And so we see an increase in the total number of tickets donated. So does that tangible reward, for example, include both boxes? What into, what into both boxes? No, it, it, it includes only, in, in the tangible reward case, the number of rewards, and I'll show the number that go into the intrinsic. So yeah, this is the tie, I'm sorry. This is the total number of tickets donated. Both boxes. Exactly. Here's the way it breaks out yeah, by box, right? So when they're not offered any reward, obviously all the tickets go into the no reward box, $52. You see in the tangible reward a very even split between the no reward box and the, uh, the uh, reward box. You see under the, the social recognition conditions, very, very similar. So they appear to be perceived very similarly. Yes? Is the, is the social merchandise there for them to see? Yes. Ah. So it's on display. Okay. Um, uh, as is a little Chipotle gift card, so we tried to make all this pretty salient okay. so we could assess that. Um, and social and the social recognition condition. Now what's interesting, yeah? Do, do they know how many other people, how many potential tickets could be given? So do they know there could no. be others? Okay. Now we look at the number of donors who treat so we see donations. Here are the number of donors. So in each group, there's 50 donors. So more than 50%, 26 students donated in the no reward condition, fewer in the tangible reward condition, and fewer in both social, both social reward conditions. Not statistically significantly different, but not an increase. Right? So we see that uh, no more students gave when they were presented with reward options. Because we are able to sort of then look and we have, you know, their raffle ticket numbers and know what individuals did, we're able to see how the individual donor allocated their tickets. So here what you see is that um, some people split their decision. They put tickets in the no reward box and in the reward box. Some chose only one of the two boxes. So here you see those students that picked only the condition where they wanted to donate directly to the charity and not receive a reward. So in the no reward condition, obviously all, all of the people had to choose that option. This was, there was no reward offered. Dramatic decreases though uh, in intrinsic giving when offered these rewards in the tangible reward condition, the social merchandise and social recognition. So here you see the, uh, the sort of numbers, 52% uh, gave uh, to the uh, no reward only condition um, in the first treatment, 10%, 20, and 24%. And we interpret this no reward only as intrinsically motivation. And we see also this changes as a crowding up effect. For the practitioners, what's really interesting, and so if you've been following the story, you saw that uh, more money was donated in the social reward conditions, but actually fewer donors. And so we actually see that compared to the no reward condition and the tangible reward condition, the amount of money given per donor rises in the social recognition and social merchandise reward conditions. And from a uh, profitability standpoint, Right? I mean, there's a significant impact. So the no reward condition, there's no cost 
to the nonprofit. In the tangible reward condition, in this experiment, we actually experienced a loss. So we took in less money than we gave out uh, in, in, our, in our gift. In the social merchandise condition, a slightly more profitable, but not really significantly so than in offering no reward. But in the social reward condition, where we had very minor costs to put a name on a banner, uh, the most profitable circumstance. So sort of in summary, tangible rewards reduce the overall donations, while the social rewards increase the overall donations. Social merchandise and recognition in our operationalization of this were viewed apparently very similarly by donors. The tangible rewards crowded out intrinsically motivated donation, as did social rewards, but to a much smaller extent. The tangible rewards had little effect on per donor contributions, while the social rewards markedly increased the donor, the per donor contributions. The tangible rewards were the least profitable mechanism, while the social recognition was the most profitable mechanism. Right. Uh, were those similar across treatments? Did they value They were. Social? Yeah, we had some issues. Obviously, we, we, it's not a completely randomized experiment. We ran this in two, we had four treatment conditions and we ran them in two groups of 25 to try and randomize over time, over the two days that we did. But because it took a while to reset the conditions and put out the merchandise, we had that limitation. Fortunately, we have a good bit of controls in these covariates from the survey they took. So the survey gives us information about gender, uh, class position. Also, we had pre-tested the rewards. We decided what rewards to use as a pre-test on what would be viewed as sort of generally popular with this, uh, with this sample group. Their valuations were very similar across treatments, uh, and these results were robust against those covariates that we looked at. Yeah? Um, for, if you can bring the numbers back up again. Sure. So in the, uh, in the condition, no, right, yeah, even, even if it would not have been a, a favorable situation. So we did see a drop in both the number of donors and the amount of money donated in the tangible reward condition. Yes? You mentioned earlier on that um, this was based on the, uh, the public radio station and their some of the, some of the reward systems that they do. I, I was just curious if they had information too, but because it seems like the test group would be very different from the yes. average donor demographic of the radio station. Yeah, no, we, we met with our public radio because we're planning to, to do a field study based on, on this result. So we wanted to sort of understand this before we worked with, with you know, WCPN donors that we were following up to do a field study based on this test. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.